Welcome back everyone to another deep dive. Today we're going to be talking about something that could be pretty important, especially if you're on art right now. Right. We're looking at some findings that came out of the CM study. They just presented them at CROI 2025. So brand new stuff. Yep. And it has to do with a bivalent HIV vaccine. Called HIV Cons VX. HIV Cons VX. All right. So big name. What we're going to try to do in this deep dive is really pull out the important stuff from this study for sure and um what it might mean for people who are on art exactly without getting too bogged down in the technical details yeah absolutely we want to make sure this is useful for you right and kind of cut through the weeds a little bit and and really focus on like what is the takeaway message here yeah because this research is actually pretty exciting when we think about how HIV might be treated in the future. Yeah, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about this HIV cons VX vaccine. What is it trying to do for people who are already on art? So the study shows that the goal of HIV cons VX is to stimulate um, your own body's own HIV specific T cell responses in individuals who are already living with HIV and keeping it under control with art. So that's you guys. So it's not about preventing you from getting HIV. No. It's about strengthening. Exactly. You know your body's response. It's about strengthening your immune system's ability to recognize and fight the virus, even while you're on medication. Okay. So it's kind of like we're trying to give your immune system an extra boost to help manage HIV. And these T cells, by the way, are like specialized soldiers in your body. Right. That can identify and destroy HIV infected cells. So a strong response from these guys is really critical. Okay, so to deliver this vaccine, they use something called viral vectors. Right. I don't know much about these. Tell me a little bit about them. What are those? Yeah, so we're talking about something called ADOX1 and MVA. And those might sound a little scary. Yeah. But what you really need to know is that these are weakened viruses. Okay. They can't replicate or cause illness. It's kind of like using a delivery service that can drop off a package. Uh -huh. In this case, the instructions for your immune system. But it can't stick around and cause trouble. So it's safe. Precisely. Okay. And as Dr. Gutalecki who presented the study emphasized these types of viral vectors have a really good safety record. Okay. They've been used successfully in other vaccines. Like what? Including ones for smallpox. Oh, wow. And more recently, the COVID-19 vaccines. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that gives us a good level of confidence that they're safe to use in this context as well. All right. So then you mentioned this term bivalence, and that might sound a little bit familiar to people, especially given recent developments in vaccine technology. Right. But what does it mean in this case? So in this case, bivalent means that the vaccine is designed to target not one, but two different parts of the HIV virus. Oh, okay. And these parts are known as mosaic one and mosaic two. So two different part of the virus. Yeah. So think of HIV as having different key structural components. Right. And these mosaic components are kind of like catchwork pieces okay. taken from different strains of HIV. And the goal is to create a vaccine that can recognize a broader range of the virus. Got it. So by hitting two different parts, you increase your chances of actually having an effect. Exactly. And the idea here is that by targeting these two different parts, the vaccine has a better chance of triggering a more comprehensive immune response. So that was their idea going in, right? Yes. The hypothesis was that if you hit two different parts, it's better than just hitting one. Exactly. They hypothesized that this bivalent approach would be more effective at revving up the immune system than a vaccine that only focused on a single target, which we call a monovalent vaccine. Okay. And the good news is that the results from this study really supported that idea. It worked? Yes. The findings showed that the bivalent vaccine the one targeting both Mosaic 1 and Mosaic 2, did induce a significantly greater T-cell response. So it really suggests that tackling the virus from multiple angles can be a more potent strategy for stimulating the immune system. And Dr. Gunjaleke actually provided some insight into why that might be the case, right? Yeah. And it has to do with the virus itself. Exactly. HIV is a tricky virus. It's constantly mutating. Right. And that leads to all sorts of different strains even within a single person's body. So by targeting multiple regions of the virus, you have a better chance of getting it. Exactly. So by targeting these conserved regions, right. these are the parts of the virus that don't change as much over time, okay. despite the mutations. The bivalent vaccine has a higher likelihood of being effective against a wider range of these viral variants. It's kind of like having a master key that can fit more than one type of lock. Oh, I like that. Even if those locks have some slight variations. Yeah. So essentially by hitting these unchanging parts, we're setting a trap that the virus can't easily escape. Gotcha. So we have this bivalent vaccine. It seems to generate a really good response. Yeah. How did they actually put it to the test, though? Okay, so this study, the CM study, was a phase one clinical trial. All right. And what that means is that they were mainly focused on seeing if the vaccine was safe. Okay. 
and also getting a first look at the immune responses it generated in people. Got it. So it was a double-blind, randomized trial, right. which is like the gold standard for this type of research. Okay. And it helps to minimize bias in the results. So it's a well-designed study. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. All of the participants in the study were individuals living with HIV who had been on stable art for at least 24 months and had a CD4 count above 350 cells per cubic millimeter. Right. Now that CD4 count, it's an indicator of how healthy your immune system is. Right. So they wanted to make sure the participants had a decent immune system already. Okay. Which means the vaccine was being tested in a context where the body could really use that extra boost. Okay, so they were all on art, had been on it for a couple years, and their immune systems were looking pretty good? Exactly. Okay, so how did they divide everybody up? Okay, so there were three different groups of participants. One group got the monovalent vaccine, okay. which only targets one of those mosaic components, right? specifically C62-M4. Another group got the bivalent vaccine, the one we've been talking about. That targets both mosaic 1 and mosaic 2, and that was labeled C1-C62-M3-M4. So they just added the C1 onto it. Exactly. That C1 just means that it's also targeting that second mosaic component. Okay. And then the third group got a placebo. Okay which in this case was just a harmless saline solution. Okay. And the vaccines or the placebo were given on day zero and then again as a booster shot on day 28 with specific doses of viral particles for each. Okay, so they got two shots. Yep. 28 days apart. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk about safety. Yes, that's a big question whenever we talk about vaccines. The good news is both the monovalent and the bivalent vaccine regimens were found to be safe and well tolerated. The participants did report some mild side effects, but those usually went away within about 24 hours. Oh, okay. And that lines up with what we know about this viral vector technology right. that we discussed earlier. Okay. So for you, that means this approach seems to be well tolerated. Yeah. Which is good news. So we know the bivalent vaccine created a stronger T cell response overall, but were there any other interesting findings in terms of like how long that response lasted or, you know, which parts of the virus it targeted best over time? Yeah, absolutely. The study found that the group that received the bivalent vaccine not only had higher T cell responses at the beginning, but those responses, especially the ones targeting Mosaic 1, they lasted for a while. Okay. The researchers measured these immune responses at different time points, including 140 days and 196 days after they first got the vaccine. And the bivalent group continued to show that strong immune response. So it's not just a one-time thing. Yeah, exactly. Long lasting. It's not a flash in the pan. Okay. Which is really encouraging. In contrast, the placebo group, right. as we would expect, didn't show any significant changes in their T cell frequency during the study. All right, so really promising results by that bivalent group. Yes. So zooming out a little bit, what are the implications here? Like where could this research lead in terms of you know how we manage HIV in the future for folks on art? That's the big question, right? Yeah. So if we connect this back to the bigger picture, the stronger and longer lasting T cell response induced by the bivalent vaccine could actually play a really important role in future strategies for achieving what we call art-free remission. Art-free remission. Yeah, and this is for folks living with HIV. Okay. And Dr. Guntulecki pointed out that while this is still early research, hmm. these findings suggest that this type of vaccine could become a part of future HIV cure strategies. Okay. And it could be used alongside other therapies that are being investigated. So it's not a cure by itself, right? but it could be part of a larger cure strategy. Exactly. And, you know, the current approach to HIV management hmm. with ART is really effective at suppressing the virus, but it means taking medication every day. Hey. The goal here is to explore strategies that could potentially allow individuals to control the virus without needing to be on ART all the time. Okay. And a stronger, broader T-cell response could be a big part of that by helping the immune system keep the virus in check, even if art is stopped for a while. Right. Of course, we need a lot more research to figure out if that's really possible. So what are the next steps for this research? Okay, so one key area they're gonna look at is the impact of the vaccine on the HIV reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah. Okay. So the reservoir is basically these long-lived cells in the body where HIV can hide out in a dormant state. Even if you're on art? Even when a person is on effective art. Wow. And, you know, getting rid of or at least controlling this reservoir is a big challenge in finding a long-term cure for HIV. Okay. They're also planning to do what are called post hoc analyses of the data from this study. Post hoc analyses. What's that? So basically, they're going to go back and look at the data again. Okay. To see if things like 
the participants age or how long they've been on yeah. art okay. might have affected how they responded to the vaccine. So they're really honing through that data. Absolutely. Okay. And Dr. Goodelucky was very optimistic about future studies. Right. The pulp is to refine these vaccine approaches right. and really explore their potential to help people with HIV achieve those periods of art-free remission. Okay, so just to bring it all together for our listeners, what is the one key takeaway message here from this deep dive into the CM study and the HIV CONSVX bivalent vaccine? The key message is that this early stage research has given us some really promising results in people with HIV who are already managing the virus well on ART. This bivalent vaccine was shown to create a stronger and broader T cell response than a vaccine that only targets one part of the virus. Right. And this is important because it suggests that targeting multiple conserved regions of HIV might be a more effective strategy for boosting your immune system's ability to control the virus. So it's not a cure, right. but it's a step in the right direction. Exactly. We still have a long way to go. But this is definitely a step forward yeah. in the ongoing quest to find strategies that could one day help us move beyond daily art and hopefully achieve art-free remission for people living with HIV. That's a great point. And it's a good reminder of the incredible work that's being done in this field. It is. So before we go, I want to leave you with a thought. Given that this bivalent vaccine can target multiple parts of this very complex HIV virus, yeah. what other combinations or therapies might be out there that could hold some real promise for strengthening the immune response in people living with HIV? You know, think about how complex this virus is and how creative scientists can be. Yeah. There might be some truly remarkable possibilities just around the corner. Hey. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on this deep dive today. We'll see you next time. See you then.